This message is for the body of Christ. God just told me that your worship is dead to him. It's dead to him because you're not doing it in spirit and in truth. God said, let my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is going on in heaven right now? The 24 elders, the four living creatures, the angels, they're worshiping God. They're worshiping him. They're on their face before him. They're not standing. They're not lifting up their hands. They're proclaiming him, saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. You are worthy, O Lord, our God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you were slain. And with your blood, you purchased men for God out of every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and a priest to serve our God, and they shall reign on the earth. They are saying this 24-7, night and day, before God, the maker of heaven and earth, before his throne. What are we doing in our worship? In church, we're standing, we're sitting, we're talking to each other. That is not of God. The flesh wants to stay in the outer court. Only the spirit goes behind the veil. God said, didn't he not tear the veil from top to bottom when he died and said it is finished? It is finished. The old tabernacle is done away with. The old covenant is done away with. This is the new covenant made with God's blood. When you worship God, you fall on your face before him. No flesh stands in the holies of holies. Who are you? Who am I to stand when God is in our presence? How dare we? How dare we? If the angelical host can lay before their faces before God and cast their crowns down, the 24 elders cast their crowns down before God, and we in our heels in church, we in our shoes in church. God told Moses, take your, your shoes off because the place that you're standing is holy ground. Oh, but we want your glory, oh God. We want your presence, oh God. But you don't even desire to do what he says. If you love me, you'd obey my commandments. God told me what I tell you in the dark, what I tell you in secret, proclaim it to the light. I'm proclaiming this today. The body of Christ needs to wake up. It's the worship that's messing us up. Yeah, this world is getting crazy. Yeah, people are coming into church and shooting us up. Hmm? Because we don't know how to worship God. We were made to worship him. We were made to worship him. Let my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Seek my kingdom first. You're not seeking God's kingdom if you're standing up. You fall on your face before God, but just one sight of him, you fall on your face. God describes how he looks like in Revelations 1, the first book of Revelations. He describes how he looks like. His face is as bright as the sun. His eyes are a blazing fire. His hair is as white as wool. He's clothed in the whitest of linen, down to his feet. His feet are bronze sharpened in the furnace. In his hands, he holds the seven stars, which are the seven angels for the seven churches. Out of his mouth comes a double-edged sword. His voice is like the, the sound of many waters. This is not some toy that we're playing with. We're not serving some idol. We're serving the most high God. How can you stand? How can you talk? How can you sit? How can you not even open up your mouth before God? People of God, get it together. Get it together, church. We worry about so many things, but God said to seek my kingdom first. And all of his righteousness, then everything else will be added unto you. Then the souls will be added unto you. If my name will be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. It's God's work, not us. Not us. Worship God in the beauty of holiness. Bow before the Lord. The word worship in the strong concordance of many leaders, many leaders read the strong concordance, yet they refuse to tell the body of Christ what worship means. They know what it means. It says to bow down. It says to kneel, to prostrate before God. Does it say stand? Does it even say sing? But nevertheless, they do sing in heaven. But the word worship, it does not mean stand. Praise is another thing. You can jump around. You can clap your hands. You can sit. You can stand. You can hop, skip, whatever you want to do. You can praise God. You're thanking him for who, what he's done. Everything he's done for you, you can thank him. God loves that. God loves the praises of his people. Bring the sacrifices of praise before God. But that happens on the outer court. 
that happens on the outer court. That happens on the outer court, guys. You're not just going to barge into the holies of holies just like that. No, not with this flesh on. No, God had to, God had to put John, the one that wrote revelations. God had to put him in the spirit first before he went to go see God. Hmm. And we yet think that it's okay to worship God in flesh. We think it's okay. It's not okay. I came to tell you today, it is not okay. And God is not pleased. Get your worship right, church. Get your worship right. Take the chairs out the church. Take the chairs out the church. There ain't no chairs in heaven. They're thrones. And yet the 24 elders get off of their throne. They lay their crowns down before God because they know there's no one greater than him. They're not greater than him. He gave them that position. So how can they dare to not lay their crowns down before him? Because he's the one that gave it to them in the first place. Jesus said, don't you lose your crown. Don't you lose it. Worship is the heartbeat. It's the heartbeat of God. It's the heartbeat of God. God desires you. God desires me. God desires you. He wants your heart. He wants all or nothing. Since when does a bridegroom want a piece of his wife, of his bride? We are the bride of Christ, are we not? We call ourselves the bride of Christ, don't we? That's your husband right there. Men, women, children, serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your might. Then you can love your neighbor as you love yourself. Worship God in the beauty of holiness. Study to show yourself approved. Look these scriptures up. Psalm 29, verse 1 and 2. Ascribe to the Lord, all you mighty ones. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. That word worship, we know that the original translation of the Bible is in Hebrew. We know this. And in the Hebrew Bible, it says bow to the Lord in the beauty of holiness. That's what the word worship means. The word serve means to worship, pray. It means worship. Look it up in the dictionary. Look it up. Look it up because I looked it up. Hmm? But what is the body of Christ doing? We want the glory of God. We want it. But we don't even make an effort to get it. Can we, can we withstand the glory of God? If God really comes in all his power, you're not going to be sitting down. I'm sorry, you're not. You're not going to be standing. It's impossible. It is impossible. Your most righteous deeds are like filthy rags to God. Get off your high horses. I had to get off my high horse. I care not what other people think because they can't do nothing for me. You can't. You didn't die for me. God did. God died for you and me. It is he that we should hold an account for. It is he that we should care about. Not man. If people don't want to listen to you when you tell them about what true worship is, then so be it. You did your part. I did my part today. Worship God the way that he wants to be worshipped. Then you'll see your life turn around. Once you step into that, the, the door behind you, it shuts. It's closed. You can't, oh, hey devil, come back in. No, the door is shut. The door is shut behind you. It's only going forward. You can only go forward from there up to the top of the mountain. Don't you desire to be with God? Don't you desire true intimacy with God? Aren't you tired of the same old, same old traditions in the church? Going to church every Sunday, going to church every Sunday, yet you don't see no changes in your life? <laughs> I tell you, I see changes in my life. I see changes. I repented. I repented. I said, Lord, my heart is open to you. Expose. Expose the enemy. Expose the very things in my heart in my life that are not of you, that you hate. God told me through one of, his, one of his sons that you care too much about what people think. How many of us care too much about what people think? 
You're afraid of the pastor? You're afraid of the ministers? You're afraid of what people will say in the congregation? Come on now. Come on. When we stand before God, he's going to ask us what we did with what he gave us. He gave us his son. That blood covenant between you and God, it cannot be broken. It cannot. And if one person breaks that side of the covenant, there's a huge problem. A huge problem. Go read it. It's in the Bible. Come on. Revelations 4 and 5. They're doing this 24-7, night and day. Dare someone come and tell me that's something to come. It's not here yet. Then why did God put it in the word of God? Why did he put it there? If he didn't want us to know it, he wouldn't have written it down. He wouldn't have told John about it. He wouldn't have told John to write it down and send it to the seven churches. Thank God for them. If it wasn't for them, where would we be? And their obedience unto God. We got to get it together, guys. We got to get it together. God is coming. He is coming. And I have to be held accountable for what he gave me. I'm not going to be silent. God didn't save me to be silent. He's not asking you to go die on a cross. He's just asking you to proclaim his word. You take communion. He said every time you take communion, you're declaring my death until I come. Communion is another problem in the church. It's not to be done every month, every first Sunday of the month. God said as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. As often. This is a sacred body and, and blood of the Lord. It's not just some cracker and some juice. Because if it was, why did God say many of you are falling asleep, sick, and dying? Can you die from a cracker and some juice? No, because you have not remembered what God has done for you when you're taking it. You have not searched yourself and judged yourself. God said if you judge yourself, you won't be judged with the world. You won't be condemned with the world. If God judges you right now, if he rebukes you right now, be joyful. Thank him for that. Because he's giving you another chance. Take heed unto the words that the Lord, O oh God, is saying. Take heed. When you take the blood and the body of, the, of Christ, don't take it lightly. Do not take it lightly. I'm telling you this today. Do not take it lightly. I can't take it lightly. If I know I have sin in my life, I must repent before the Lord. And it does not take five seconds. It does not take 45 seconds as the churches love to do. People are not on their knees. You're not on your knee? You're not on your knee. You're standing. Come on. Come on. Who are we? Who do we think we are? God said even what you, what you have, it will be taken away from you. Come on. Give God what he deserves. Honor him for who he is. This is a message.